lesson you will need a notebook and a pen and you will need these sheets from uh, last lesson okay these homework sheets so hopefully you did the two coin toss experiment to see which uh, one would come up the most so we have four possibilities heads heads tails tails heads tails and tails heads and you needed to record it on on this sheet now the other one was the sum of two dice chart and would you rather so we will check this in a, in a minute and also you need this sheet for this lesson probability cards okay so if you don't have this you can take your notebook and copy some questions I will show the sheet to you again at the end of this lesson so you can write the questions if you don't have it so if you need a bit more time to prepare for the lesson just pause this and get ready you need uh, these things okay let's move on and check the homework so um, the homework for sum of two dice chart let's have a look here what is the probability of rolling the sum of nine now um, let's look at this table we can see that there are uh, four possible outcomes okay how to get the sum of nine you need to roll six and three or five and four or four and five or three and six okay so we have four possibilities so four over 36 or one over nine we have 11.111 percent which is unlikely okay now next question what is the probability of rolling the sum of two let's go back to this table and have a look at the, the two comes up only one time so we will write it like this one over 36 now if you remember 36 are the possibilities of um when you roll two dice of any combination okay so one one uh, one two one three okay we have 36 so to get a sum of two there's only one chance so 1 over 36, we got 2.77%, which is unlikely. Now, next question, which sum has the highest probability? If you look at this table, you can see that 7 comes up the most times, 6 times. So let's write this as 6 over 36, 1 in 6 chance, or divide by 100, 16.666% um, chance, which is still unlikely, but much higher probability than those other two. And the last question, which sum has the lowest probability? So same as question two, uh, it's the sum of two, or number two. Uh, it has one in 36 chances, so only 2.77%. Now, if you need more time to check this, just pause this um, lesson and check your homework. Now, let's move on to the other homework question. Would you rather flip three coins, win if all match, or roll three dice, win if none match? So you needed to think about this one at home. Now I'm going to give you the answer for this. So more chance if you choose the dice. Why? If you roll three dice, there are 216 possible outcomes you can see here uh, of different combinations. Now if you count how many of them would have uh, different numbers, there would be 112 outcomes. Now hopefully I counted this correctly. You can also check. This is the table of all possible outcomes. 112 outcomes are the ones that would have different numbers. For example, like 231, 241, and you can see, you can perhaps count it and check. So it works out to be 51.8% chance of getting a different no number every time you roll three dice. Now when it comes to flipping or tossing three coins say, and getting um, heads, heads, or tails, tails, tails um, the same, we only have 50% chance and why because there are four possible outcomes when you uh, flip coins at the same time and you can have uh, only two favorable outcomes so we need to get uh, we need to get either all heads or all tails so we have 50% chance now so we can see there's a higher chance of us winning if we choose the dice now I've made this video at home and I did the experiment and every time I did this experiment, I, the dice always won as well. And you can try this at home if you have three dice and three coins. So let's see. Let's look at this video and see what, what happened. Hello guys, so we're going to do an experiment of um, tossing three coins and seeing if we can get all equal, all the same, either all heads or all tails, or rolling the dice and getting all three different numbers. Okay, now I'm going to record um, out of 10.
total went out of 10 for both of these separately. Now to, to save some time I might uh, do these at the same time. So let's see. First of all, a couple of points. So we can see here that it is zero because we have two two um, tails and one head. So zero for this. Uh, now also zero for this because we roll two twos and one three. Now let's let's start with this one this time. We have one for um, dice. And how about the coins? And zero for coins. Okay, get dice. We have one for dice. And let's try the coins. And we have zero for coins. Yeah, let's try dice. We have one for dice. And we have zero for coins. So you can see this is going as predicted or as we thought. Um, one. How about the coins? We're nearly halfway there. Okay, we finally got one for coins. All right, let's keep trying. So one for dice. How about the coins? Let's see. And we have one for coins. Okay. All right. Zero for dice. How about the coins? And one for coins. Now we have uh, zero for dice. Let's see about the coins. And zero for coins. So we have two more. Two more goes. Okay, zero for dice. How about the coins? And one for coins. Actually, the coins are catching up. One more. Okay, one for dice. And how about the coins? And zero for coins. So let's calculate. We have um, six out of ten for six out of ten for rolling the dice, and we have four out of ten for coins. So you can see that, as predicted in our um, probability prediction, uh, that the dice wins. Now I've actually done this experiment a few times and every time I do it, the dice wins. So that must be saying something. Alright guys, so you can try this at home if you have free coins and free dice. So as I said, every time I tried this experiment at home, every time the dice wins. Now these are the results. Okay, so very quickly, uh, the time of probability. So we looked at this uh, last lesson. Uh, this is just the, the way to write a fraction. Okay, uh, first you must find the possible outcomes, okay? Um, and then total possible outcomes. So this is just a little reminder of how to write the probability. Okay, let's move on to the question um, on the spinning wheel. So what is the probability of, of the arrow landing on blue? So let's have a look at the spinner. On the right. So there are five sections. Two of the sections are blue. Okay, and the other sections are different colors. Now the probability of landing on blue is two out of five. Okay, or uh, 100 divided by five and multiply by two, which is 40 percent, and it's unlikely. Okay, um, you can see this is this is how it works. Okay, um, it's less than a half chance. Okay, now let's look at the next question. So open the notebook and answer the questions. Um, you can pause this video, I'll wait a little bit. You need to write the question or no, actually don't write the question, just write the answer. So what is the probability of getting blue color? And the next question, what is the probability of getting red color? So I'll give you a little bit of time to think. You can pause this video and answer these questions. No, 
on the next slide we'll check the answer so if you need more time please pause it now okay blue you can see that there are three um, sections of blue so uh, and there are eight sections in total so we will write it as 3 over 8 and 100 divided by 8 and multiply by 3 we will have a, we will get a 37.5 percent chance so it's quite unlikely and it's less than half chance now red uh, there's only one red section and eight other colors. So 1 over 8, uh, 100 divided by 8 and multiply by 1, you get 12.5% chance, so more unlikely. Okay, so pause this and um, if you're not sure, have a look at it for a bit longer. Let's move on to the next question. Now we have three questions. Use a spinner to write a fraction for the probability of each event. So you need to write a fraction. Okay, remember a fraction um, is one number written over another number. So one number at the top, then a line in the middle, and another number at the bottom. So first question, less than 4. Second question, greater than 8. And third question, less than 8. So have a look at the spinner on the left and answer these questions in your notebook. I'll give you a little bit of time. Now you probably will need more time so you can pause this. Uh, you can pause this lesson and take your time. In the next slide will show the answers. So if you need more time, please pause this video. So the first answer is 3 over 8 because we have 3 sections of blue. Okay, the next one, greater than 8. There are no numbers greater than 8, so it's 0 over 0, okay? So 0 chance or impossible. And then less than 8. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 over 8. It's quite likely we, will, we would get a number that's less than 8, okay? So these are the answers. You can just pause this and have a look um, if you need more time. Now, this is just a reminder of our probability line, okay? So on the left is zero, impossible, then we move a little bit closer to the right, unlikely 25%, the middle is 50%, then 75% likely, and one or 100% certain, okay? So this is the line. And we copied this in our notebook, so just remembering what it looks like. Okay, next question. Open the notebook and answer this question. So please listen carefully. Here you can see some cakes. If a cake is chosen as random, so you just pick one cake, what is the probability that the number of candles on the cake is four? So think about this question. You need to have a look at it. Uh, perhaps I'll give you a little clue. How many cakes are there? Okay, the total of cakes. Um, and then you need to look at the candles, okay? So see, the question is, what is probability of getting the cake that has four candles? So you need to have a look at how many candles do these cakes have, okay? And then see if you can write a fraction for the number of candles um, that have four. What's the probability of picking the cake that has the candles, the four candles on it? I'll give you some time to think, and then we will check the answer. If you need more time, you can pause this. I will now move on to the answer, okay? So please pause it. If you haven't figured it out yet and need a bit more time, please pause it and think about it. And now the next slide will show you the answer. So actually, it's 4 over 8 or half chance of equally getting uh, the cake with 4 candles or not. As you can see here, we have uh, 4 cakes that have four candles and the other cakes have either three candles or six so the chance is 50 percent so it's equally likely we'll choose that one so we just don't know um, you never know but that the, the chance is right in the middle okay so right in the middle equally likely 50 percent all right next question so this one is a bit more tricky you need to think about this perhaps make some perhaps draw some notes make some diagrams just spit, take your time to open the notebook and answer the question what is the probability of getting a two on both spinners so if you spin both of those what is the probability of both of them showing two now i want you to think about it of all the different options there are uh, four possible answers and i want you to really think about what what could be the answer and why and uh, i'll give you some time and then i'll show you the answer
Now, hopefully you've all chosen something. If not, pause this. Um, I'm not gonna wait for too long in this lesson because I have other things I need to go through. But if you need more time, please pause it and uh, before I show you the answer. And this is the answer. So we have 16 possible outcomes and only one outcome would give us um, 2, 2. So we have 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, okay, 2, 4, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 2. So every time you spin them, we have these possibilities. Um, now, to get 2, 2, we really have a low chance, okay? So 1 in 16, the answer is 1 in 16, which is low chance. It's really quite unlikely we would get 2, 2. Okay, um, so this is the answer. Now, let's move on. If you need more time to think about it, you can pause this video. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Now, this is a video. Um, I want you to watch this video and think about how probability is shown in this video. Okay, um, so just, just watch it and think about it. It was sunrise at the crossroads, a glorious day to see, when a cowpoke came riding up on a horse and looked down the road, called three, stopping to think about someplace else in probability. It was likely, yes, though it wasn't for sure, that this cowpoke would be the three. The sun climbed up to high noon. Another cowpoke said, gee, with an outfit like mine, it's certainly clear. It's unlikely I'll visit three. A dry wind whistled. The cowpoke spun more than once to be on the safe side. But the answer was clear. This lone cowpoke down the someplace else road would ride. Then later that same afternoon, one mule from a mule team clomped in. One look at this cowpoke would make it quite clear that three's an impossible spin. The spinner could spin all day, all night. But one thing was easy to see. This cowpoke was headed to someplace else. But never, oh never, the three. As sunset arrived, one last cowpoke rode up, strong horses back. The chances the three on the spinner would be were certain. That is a fact. Impossible clearly was not a word this cowpoke would ever use. A few quick spins made sure the three, the only road to choose. So, please open a notebook and answer a question. How is the probability used in this video? So think about what did you see in this video? What happens? Okay, um, how is it used? How is the probability used? Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time. Uh, think about what you saw. Just in your own words, what do you think happened? So we looked at some spinners and the spinner was used in this video. And people were choosing uh, which way to go. How, how did they choose that? So please write something in your own words. If you need more time, you can pause it, and I'm going to keep moving on with this lesson. Now we're going to look at card probability and some questions. I think last lesson we looked at um, some card questions. So uh, there are 52 cards in the deck. If you have a deck of cards, you can also try some of these at home. Now let's look at the first question. One card is drawn from a wealth shuffle deck of uh, 52 cards. Find the probability of getting the Queen of Diamonds. So to total number of cards um, is 52. We have four queen cards. 
total number of queen of diamonds is only one. So the way we would write this as a fraction is number of queens of diamonds over total number of cards. So 1 over 52. So the probability is 1 over 52. Okay. So it's a very low chance. Okay. A very low chance of getting a queen of diamonds. And you can try this at home if you have a deck of cards. Now next question. One card is drawn from a well shuffled deck of 52 cards. Find the probability of getting a red face card. Now, there again, total number of cards 52. Face cards are king, queen, and jack. Okay, um, and there are six face cards. So we will write 6 over 52, or make it 3 over 26, and that's our probability as a fraction. Okay, now let's look at some questions, and we can try this as well. So open the notebook and see if you can answer this. A man chooses a card at random. So he just picks a card from a pack of playing cards. What is the probability that the card is a diamond? Okay, so um, see if you can think about it. How many diamond cards are in the deck? So just think about it. If you have a deck of cards, that would be helpful. Um, if not, um, I will show you the answer. Okay, but hopefully you can um, check as well. If you're not sure after the answer, you can always go onto the internet and check or use the cards that you have and count how many um, diamond cards are there in the deck. Give me a bit of time. Now the answer is uh, 13 over 52, or 1 in 4, okay? So there is a 25% chance of getting the diamond card, so it's quite unlikely. All right, next question. A card is chosen at random from a pack of playing cards. What is the probability that the card is the jack of diamonds? Okay, jack of diamonds. So please think about this one. So it's not just a diamond, it's jack of diamonds. Now please pause this video if you need more time. I will go to the answer now. So it's 1 over 52. Okay, there's only one jack of diamonds. So 1.92 or approximately 2%. So it's quite unlikely you would get a jack of diamonds. Now the next video uh, shows something else about probability. I would like you to watch this video and uh, think about what is this video about. If you can understand anything, that's great. Because after this video, you can um, you need to write one or two sentences about what did you do you think happened. You and a fellow castaway are stranded on a desert island, playing dice for the last banana. You've agreed on these rules: you'll roll two dice, and if the biggest number is one, two, three, or four. Player 1 wins. If the biggest number is 5 or 6, player 2 wins. Let's try twice more. Here, player 1 wins. And here, it's player 2. So who do you want to be? At first glance, it may seem like player 1 has the advantage, since she'll win if any one of four numbers is the highest. But actually, player 2 has an approximately 56% chance of winning each match. One way to see that is to list all the possible combinations you could get by rolling two dice, and then count up the ones that each player wins. These are the possibilities for the yellow die. These are the possibilities for the blue die. Each cell in the chart shows a possible combination when you roll both dice. If you roll a 4 and then a 5, we'll mark a player 2 victory in this cell. A 3 and a 1 gives player 1 a victory here. There are 36 possible combinations, each with exactly the same chance of happening. Mathematicians call these equiprobable events. Now we can see why the first glance was wrong. Even though player 1 has 4 winning numbers, and player 2 only has 2, the chance of each number being the greatest is not the same. 
there is only a 1 in 36 chance that 1 will be the highest number, but there's an 11 in 36 chance that 6 will be the highest. So if any of these combinations are rolled, player 1 will win, and if any of these combinations are rolled, player 2 will win. Out of the 36 possible combinations, 16 give the victory to player 1, and 20 give player 2 the win. You could think about it this way, too. The only way player 1 can win is if both dice show a 1, 2, 3, or 4. A 5 or 6 would mean a win for player 2. The chance of one die showing 1, 2, 3, or 4 is 4 out of 6. The result of each die roll is independent from the other, and you can calculate the joint probability of independent events by multiplying their probabilities. So the chance of getting a 1, 2, 3, or 4 on both dice is 4 out of 6 times 4 out of 6, or 16 out of 36. Because someone has to win, the chance of player 2 winning is 36 out of 36 minus 16 out of 36, or 20 out of 36. Those are the exact same probabilities we got by making our table. But this doesn't mean that player 2 will win, or even that if you played 36 games as player 2, you'd win 20 of them. That's why events like dice rolling are called random. Even though you can calculate the theoretical probability of each outcome, you might not get the expected results if you examine just a few events. Okay, so if you can please open your notebook and write down a couple of sentences about what you think this probability video was about. So just think about what happened, what were those uh, two people doing, a girl and a cat. Um, also think about which one would you be and do you agree? So I'll give you some time. You can also pause and think about this. Okay, um, what do you think happened there? Now, if you didn't quite understand, uh, it's okay because this, this is a difficult um, video to understand. So we can talk about it more when I come back. But um, probability is interesting. And again, uh, we, just, we are never sure that you're going to win, but if the probability is higher, when you choose one option, you can all, always think, okay, this has higher probability of winning, so I should choose um, this one. Like we did the dice and the coins, okay, the dice had more, more chance of winning. So you can always examine it and think and then choose, okay? Now, if you need more time, please pause this. I'll move on to the next thing. We have uh, one more question. So open your notebook again and choose one and explain why would you choose option A. So option A is receive five dollars every time you get a double. So a double could be one one, two two, three three, four four, five five, or six six. When you roll two dice ten times or option B, receive five dollars every time you get any two even numbers. So even numbers will be uh, two four, two six, okay. Um, now let's, uh, let's think about it and I want you to, to open your notebook and, and think about this question. I'll give you some time and then you can pause it as well before I go to the answer and explain it more. Okay, so just think about which would you rather go to option A or option B. Now again, if you have dice, you can try this at home and see how you go. Okay, I'm going to move on to the answer. Please pause it if you're still thinking. Now, so the answer, to get a double, you'd need to roll 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6. So there are 6 chances out of 36, which is 16.66%. Now, any two even numbers, you have more options. So you have 2, 2, 4, 2, 6, 2, 2, 4, uh, 4, 4, 6, 4, 2, 6, 4, 6, 6, 6. So you actually have 9 out of 36 um, chances or options. So 25%. So I guess if we are going to choose, I think uh, option B would give us a slightly higher chance of winning. Now again, we are not sure, but it's um, theoretically the way it is, our chances are higher with rolling, uh, getting to um, any two even numbers rather than getting a double. Okay, now last thing is the homework. So this is our homework, probability cards. If you don't have the sheet, you can copy these questions in your notebook.
So what is probability of picking an ace from a deck of cards, a number less than four from a deck of cards, a face card from a deck of cards, a spade from a deck of cards, an eight or nine from a deck of cards, and a bonus question. If two jokers are present in a deck of cards, what is the probability of picking one joker? So these are the questions for homework, and I, send, I will send this sheet to the group. Okay? Okay, so our lesson is over, guys. Uh, please take care, and I will see you soon.